Hello! Hello! And welcome to this new episode of... The Ed Factor. We are back and we are ready. To rock. And um, today we are talking about Bruce Dickinson's monstrous album... The Chemical Wedding. So we've got our morning suits on. We've got our top hats waiting outside. And I'm just uh, boiling up a wee cauldron or something here to make sure that the felt is correct, you know. Doing a bit of alchemy. There's all kinds of alchemy <laughs> going on here at uh, the Ed Factor HQ. So, yeah, if you are a regular viewer of our channel, um, our last episode was... Virtual 11. Virtual 11. Yep. Well, no, it was Mandrake Project, actually, Andy, yes. Mandrake Project. I had a wee bit of a, an issue with the, uh, you know, stuff. So, I wasn't able to make it from the bog. Too. This is very, tr <laughs> very true. Chris wasn't well, which made me actually forget that I did the Mandrake uh, yeah. Project, because it wasn't the same without him. So, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, a great feedback on that episode, Andy, by the way. Just, just checking the, the channel there on the computer. So... Thanks, everybody, for taking the time to watch it. And, yep. you know, it's brilliant. And hopefully you will get as much satisfaction from this as you did that. So Yeah. So the Mandrake Project was obviously a more uh, recent uh, a new, it being and a, a new release. One album, a album in, yeah. in, in yeah. numerous countries. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. it's, it's done really, really well. well. Done, so, uh, but we return to the more uh, history-based The chronology. Uh, reviews, the chronology mm -hmm. and... Uh, our last one would have been virtual eleven. Yeah. Then. So uh -huh. we're we're going back to nineteen ninety eight. Yeah. What a year! What a year! Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, we had said virtual eleven was uh, released earlier in the year, year in March. Mm -hmm. March. Fast forward to the fifteenth of September, nineteen ninety eight. A date that will go down in infamy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Bruce Dickinson releases his next solo album, which is the follow up to the acclaimed. Return to Form Accident, accident of birth. birth. Yep. We also have an episode on Accident Birth you can check out there. Yep. Um so yeah, this album clocks in at fifty seven minutes thirty two yep. seconds. It does indeed. It Just a, under the R mark, lovely. Yep. Ten recorded, tracks. Ten tracks. Yep. Recorded in Sound City and Silver Cloud LA. Yep. Um very famous studio. Same uh, same band, uh, same lineup as the Accident of Birth. He's got Adrian Smith on guitar, Roy Z on guitar, and uh, production duties. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the same uh, rhythm section yep. as well of Eddie Absolutely. Casillas and Dave Ingram. Ingram, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, uh, Accident of Birth was a great album, and. I remember casting my mind back, being really excited about this one because I thought Accident Birth, Birth was, was, great, was yeah. so uh -huh. good. Um, little did I know uh, <laughs> that this album would just be... Well, don't just keep your powder dry. Maybe. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. I know in the last episode that Andy did sort of state the claim that, about this album, but I have to say, coming from this again, Andy, 90s was back in the mid in the virtual 11. This one kind of skipped me by, but... A few tracks on it didn't, so mm -hmm. I was back in the fold, um, and but I haven't listened to the full album for a very, very long time, and it was great to be reacquainted with it. I okay. have to say, okay, really did okay. enjoy it. So, so well, we kick off, will we? we will kick off. We could um, give a brief overview of kind of this is a bit of a concept album. Yeah, very much so. For those of you who don't know about it, um, it. Um, the idea of the album came from uh, Bruce had been working on a movie New script, script. That's right. with uh, Julian Doyle, mm -hmm. um, who's a film director, had worked yep. with Monty Pythons and all this kind of That's stuff. That's right. Yep, and, yep. Uh, Very good line. He had um, been working on a script for a movie called The Chemical Wedding, which would be based on the life of Alistair Crowley, Crowley mm -hmm. who is a kind of eccentric, yeah, um, kind of a occult. Jimmy Page. Jimmy Page was Jimmy obsessed Page bought with his house. Yeah. 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 Uh, Mr. Crowley. Ozzy Osbourne. Ozzy Osbourne. You know, so a, man, of... a man who is no stranger to the, the, the gods of metal. Yes. Very true. Very true. But physical and musical. But the movie was eventually made, but way, way, way after yeah, this. Yeah, 2008. But... And it is on YouTube. I did get a watch at it there so that, uh, in prep for this. So. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, but anyway, Bruce, I think, uh, had the, decided that for this follow-up, The Accident of Birth, he went, I'm I'm gonna steal that as a title. And yeah, actually, mm -hmm. he um, and the title comes from a a, a German book. Yeah, like a, uh, which is called the Chemical Wedding, Wedding of, of Christian Rosenkreutz. Okay, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. um, like a, I was looking at it as well. So 
1500s or uh, 1459 yeah. but yeah. A, a edited I think it means edited into English perhaps in yeah. 1616 okay and uh, it was a book that inspired uh, many of the alchemists of the 17th and 18th centuries mm -hmm. apparently yeah um, uh, alchemists being kind of uh, chemistry yeah. equals secret marriage apparently so um yeah. yeah, all trying to turn with... stuff into gold, <laughs> and for the layman, for for the layman, <laughs> yes, uh, turning piss or wine into gold, <laughs> attempting to uh, purify and perfect certain materials to piss. create possibly the elixir of immortality <laughs> or a link to God. There you go, etc., etc. All kind of weird and wonderful stuff. And if there's any alchemists out there, the press, if you want to leave a note in the comments, give us a wee bit of a the skinny on what alchemy really entails in the really 20, entails. 21st century. 21st century. That'd but, be very interesting. Uh, but yeah, Bruce became kind of uh, fascinated with William Blake as a, as a figure. Mm -hmm. um, William Blake was an English uh, poet and painter. Um, tiger, tiger, burning bright. Isn't that William Blake? Yes. Yep. That, that that would probably be the one most most of you kids know, would know there. Uh, yeah. Or Jerusalem. Yeah. Or also um, Thomas Harris slash Hannibal Lecter prequel, The Red Dragon. The painting on the back of Rafe Fine's ah, back is also a William right. Blake uh, yes. painting. Uh, so there's a couple of pop culture references for you. But um, Bruce got heavily into um, the Peter Ackroyd biography on William Blake and it's actually that book that really inspired yeah. this album uh, very very heavily and each song has uh, a frame or a theme yeah. that is plucked from Blake's works um, so on the one hand if you want to go into all that you can go down the rabbit hole of all that yeah. uh, on the other hand and Bruce does say this in his, his own biography that uh, or has said it in an interview that you can just listen to the album and not have a clue what it's about. Yeah. Just listen to it because it's it's sledgehammer heavy is what he uh, a phrase he used. Didn't read my notes. And it's it's all there. The 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 Blake stuff and the depth is is all there if yeah. you choose to delve into it. So, um. Anyway, will we kick off? Kick off then? track so, one. Track one is King, King and, Crimson, and Crimson, a Dickinson Roy Z composition, yep. and it lasts four minutes, 43 seconds. And the, one of the themes in this album, which I really like, is nothing outstays its welcome, really. Yep. So what we have is an opening salvo. I think that's probably the best way I would ex describe that. And as it written here in my notes, opening salvo, and the third word I wrote was sledgehammer. Sledgehammer. So, <laughs> It so announces a itself of court. with this kick drum and snare yeah. drum uh, and big heavy <laughs> detuned <laughs> chords. Yeah. And it just, it's like, wow. Yep. How heavy is, it, it's ominous, brooding. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, everything has power. The preamble and, and, to a storm or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. There's real weight yeah. there. To, yeah. to, to, totally. Um, and... Uh, it's just immediately you go, my God, this is even heavier than Accident of the Birds. Yeah, absolutely, definitely, and that's 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 a theme the mm. whole way through. This is a this is a, a a perfect heavy metal opener, I think. Yeah, really heavy, really dark. Leans in the Sabbath a bit, but also takes the like the real cream of the modern era as well. Yeah. You know, genre defines it probably. I would say a great song, absolutely. Fantastic. Arise awake, the king and crimson, crimson comes. comes. It's dark, you know? it's heavy, yeah. it's um I think it sets a stall out for the album. Some great parts in it as well. For being such a short song, you know, that it does it does sort of lurch from one bit to the other. Uh, you know, the from and the the rep the chorus, the riff and the verse, the chorus is great. Yeah. You know, and then you've got both guitarists setting their stall out really early. Re really, really yeah. early. I mm -hmm. mean, um, yeah, the, for me, the, the the lyrics are sinister. I think uh, this song is about fear. Yeah, and um, that can be inner fear or fear of uh, the devil or Satan or yeah. the King Crimson. And apparently, also the King Crimson was a well-known metaphor for the purification of mankind's soul and the union uh, with God, which was the Three alchemist, mal. which was the <laughs> alchemist's goal. So uh, those are uh, from an interview I dug up with Bruce himself. So it, the song works on a couple of different yeah. uh, Blake levels. Some but, brilliant wee touches in this song. There's a there's like a pinch harmonic or something 
in the end of the chorus it brings you into the into the second from the end of the lead. Yep. And just little things like that. Really the production is brilliant and the just, playing I'm is like, yeah. Whoa. yeah. You know, it's glorious. The Bruce soars it's the start of it. You know, it sounds phenomenal. Yeah, it here. does. It does. Uh, his range in this in this track alone goes from a kind of you know mid range uh, brooding well, yeah dark verse. Are we lean back into to... the the we would have criticised maybe a bit of the raspy, but that's okay. You know because the chorus just it's like, all right like, if you're yeah. doing the soaring. It's yeah, like a yeah. aye, it's like a, an act if you know what I mean. It's like a it's like a, an act one and then into the. Act one into the act, chorus. I mean, superb for me. Yeah, the, the, there's a, the awesome kind of ascending chords yeah. that build up to the chorus. Yeah, uh-huh. it's just so powerful, and uh, for me, this sounds like peace of mind on steroids. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and I mean that in the greatest possible way. It is. <laughs> it is is superb. S- simply yeah. just. Peak Dickinson. Yeah. Um, peak Dickinson. Yeah, yeah, it is peak Dickinson. Right, right from the off. Yeah. Uh-huh. This is like, wow. Yeah. It's another level. Peak Dickinson. I like that. This is yeah. this is peace of mind for the new millennium or yeah. whatever you yeah, want yeah. to call it this decade yeah, yeah. Uh, to, to me. And that is something I will probably repeat a fair bit. Um, fantastic tune. Yep. You've mentioned the guitar. The, the solos. Yeah. First solos, Roy Z. Blistering. Yep. Absolutely. And... For me, the great thing that comes across is that uh, chemistry. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Alchemy between the two <laughs> the two players because absolutely, Rosie really shreds, and uh, Adrian is a more measured player. Yeah, uh-huh. and uh, this song really shows that yeah. so well because the, the the change in player you can just hear it instantly. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Adrian Smith's solo is less notes. Yeah, with. Uh, ebb and flow peaks and troughs yep. you can tell it's more thought out um, and, and it's it's just fantastic and we yeah. are obviously if you've watched any of these episodes before we are fanatics about it we love them love them so this is oh. just so lovely to, mm. to, to be able to talk about these things you know yeah because he, he does he really nails it it's really it's a magic <laughs> so solo good. magic so magic solo yeah. and a really um <coughs> I think the ending of this track yeah. as well is really sinister. Ah, it is. It's, it's it's really sinister. Yeah, I'm not going to sing it. Uh, no, no, but it's like uh, that's that's some dark stuff. Yeah, it, it is. And but then coming out your window, like the, the thing I love about it is like you just it, it is a fantastic um, amuse bouche for the next track. Yeah, <laughs> so it is. Which is of course the title track. The title track, The Chemical, Chemical Wedding. Wind. Oh my God. <laughs> Another Bruce, yeah. uh, Roy Z. Doom. It's just... <laughs> it is. It is Iomi-esque, but... Ja, yeah, that, whatever you call it, a diabolus in music. I can't remember what you call that. Mm-hmm. The note at flat six or something. Or I don't know what it is. But, you know, you you know the note we're talking about. The, dun, the dun. Devil's Triad. Yeah, The yeah. Devil's Triad. That's, <laughs> it. that's exactly right. Uh, it, but it's, it's brilliant. got that vibe to it. Four minutes and six seconds. Again, um, yeah. Slow, or not too, not slow, not ponderous. Just gets into it. This song sounds grandiose. Yeah. Epic. And yet it's only four minutes. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, um... You've got the doom laden intro, and then it takes you into the the watery tremolo. Watery tremolo, yeah. uh, very melancholic verse. Yeah, mm-hmm. and this is a song which is about tragedy. Yeah, and um, that that definitely the, the soundscape is there yeah. for the for the verses. Oh my god! Yeah, um, the, you know the in the movie the two thousand eight movie they use this as the title track. Mm-hmm. And just when I was skipping on YouTube, I, I just the the credits are going like any movie, and you're like going so. Perfect. So, Such so a great perfect. cinematic tune, actually. It's so epi- it is epic. Uh, I, I mean, and he sounds Bruce sounds. Uh, There's light and shade, light and shade yep. between the verse and and the the. I mean, the chorus just is huge. It's monstrous. Ah, it is, and he sounds absolutely terrific. Like he soared in King and Crimson, but this is just up to the next precipice, up to yeah. the stratosphere. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. Jo- yeah. It's yeah. A f- I'm a fierce. I just can't can, get can, over. I love this song. Yeah, it's, br- it's, it's brilliant. Brilliant. Ab- so it absolutely is. fantastic. Ab- um, <laughs> I've written yeah. something that I think this song has a real dark beauty about it. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. Because, uh, and yeah, it does. again, I'll probably reiterate this with track, track by track. This is really, really, really heavy. 
but it's also beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a very hard thing to, to achieve. There's somehow there's nothing aggressive. There's not. In this you're song. right. There's not. There's not. There's not. It should be. It sh or you think it would be. But no, it's but really it's heavy in a very yeah. different way. Yeah. It's got weight, but it, it it's the, it, there's there's like a it's just the, it has its own gravity. The vibe of yeah. it or so, yeah. something mm -hmm. is menacing. Yeah. And, uh, but yet there's this melancholy beauty there. Yeah, it's it's just absolutely terrific. Um, yeah, the way his vocal goes in the chorus is very. It, it's not a well, it's nearly like a Dickinson trope. Really, it's like a you know. Um, you lead into that first couple of vials, you go really, really like Tears mm -hmm. of the Dragon. I'm sort of thinking yep. as well, mm -hmm. sort of idea. But this is this is definitely far better produced. So it makes it that little bit. It has the scaffolding behind it, the music. I they agree. Lift it I even agree. higher. And, and the, the, you didn't mention the classical breakdown, on it, which is class. You know what I mean? Like, I, I haven't got that far <laughs> yet. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean it, it's a solo. It starts with a a. a Beautiful melody, yeah. Before it kind of opens up, and, and I was looking for it. I else. thought it was a classical chin, you mm -hmm. know, like they would bring in a bit of Bach or something like that. But it's not. But it's got that. It's just got yeah. that vibe. It's just, it, you know, it's a, uh, you know, it's it, it's composer um, Adrian Smith or Roy no, Z. No, uh, I think I, I'm not sure whether that solo is. I think it might be a Roy Z one, right, but, okay. I, I, but I'm, I'm not 100 percent yeah. sure which. Yes, may um, contradict what we said earlier, where you can really tell the difference. I, I think this is a Roy Z one because okay. it does it, it opens up and really blisters. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think, but anyway, yeah, uh, it, it's it's a brilliant, brilliant solo, and uh, Bruce sounds absolutely almighty. The harmonies at the end on the oh, yeah, outro yeah. chorus, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. like it's like wow, uh, yeah, just a just wow, absolutely. Yeah, because it, it repeats track. itself. To yeah. Oh, that's brilliant! Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's so good. It's, it's so it's, good. It's so, so Another good. again. Not mm -hmm. I'm not criticizing it, but just again that bit in Tears of Dragons brilliant as well. Where you know he repeats that first line and he sings over it. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. But this is this is one two punch. One two punch. Like, but it's not one two punch. It's a one two tombstone pile driver. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? Of of dark gothic beauty. There we go. <laughs> Somehow, you know, I don't exactly. know. Yeah. It's like a, you know, and it's about to be. It's like a glass of fine wine. <laughs> well, it's about to be a one, two, three. Be punch on because you. Uh, yeah, next up is the tar. <laughs> Another Bruce Dickinson, Roy Z track. Groovy as hell, all hell. Yeah, it's like a modern Rothschild. That's exactly what I was going to say. The initial intro. Yeah, yeah. Peer, peer, I. This was a song you played to me. This is the song that I have always loved of this album. Yeah. Really, really something. Is this a song back in 98? I went, get a load of this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. On the CD. Yeah. In amongst on the, the CD. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Brilliant track. Um, Starts off. Slamming. Drum. Great. Groove. Yep. Double hi-hat work. Yep. Bass comes rumbling in. Yep. It's got, it, it is like a, like a kind of heavy, groovy Rothschild. Yeah, uh -huh. intro absolutely takes, and then you've got this cool takes no prisoners, takes no prisoners, but then you've got this cool double string riff motif yeah. coming yeah. in on it, which Aye. is which is just yes. really unusual. Yeah, mm -hmm. as a riff, it's not a normal riff. No, it's not. But it's so cool. Yeah, it just works over that groove so so well. And then Bruce, comes and then in, they slam you know, in with power chords yeah. and just this. Incredible voice. The voice is, you know, there are 12 commandments. There are 12. <laughs> 12. There are 12. 12 divisions. divisions. 12 oh. are the pagans. Exactly. <laughs> but it's Taro in it. Who Taro card. the sky. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, Taro. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do that funny outline for you. <laughs> There's a lot of Taro card imagery. I think the, the fool, the hangman, all this kind of stuff. Yeah, the lovers of Taro. Yeah. Are in there. Uh -huh. uh, ultimately, a song is about union. Yeah. Moon and sun divide it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that can be the union of, obviously, alchemy is about the union of um, materials. Yeah, I, but. Uh -huh. To try and achieve some purity, purity or, yeah. or some weird power Our or something state. like that. And also, there's a the sexual thing, man getting, and woman, that uh, kind of union, get me in a higher state, and, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, th those are the those are the bleak themes that are there. Um, the production is stunning on this. The verses are stunning, brilliant. Andy. Um, yeah, I, I 
I this mean, isn't going to be a five, I don't think. No, that's what we're not talking about. We're not, not, not going to be a five. Uh, the chorus is unbelievable. Yeah. It's a knockout chorus. Yeah. Uh-huh. Bruce just but, sounds but Hold almighty. on, there's been three knockout yeah. choruses in a yeah. row. Yeah, it, 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 it is absolutely epic. And um, and I love some of the, uh, just on a production level, um, right, A, we've got the weight. B, we've got clarity. Um, but there's lovely little touches in there, such yeah. as... Um, you know the chorus has maybe been played a couple of times, but the, a second run of the second chorus, they bring in that double string riff uh-huh. that started the yeah. song off. It's so cool, yeah. just bringing that little line in, just a little bit of ear candy, just yeah. to lift it again. It's really, really smart. Um, it, it's incredible songwriting, it I think. Uh, great breakdown, brilliant breakdown, change Absol- of pace, yeah, absolutely. And bang on the ear, bang on the ears too, like bang yeah. on ninety eight, you know, like chunky, Alice chunky, and Chainsy almost, Alice and Chainsy, bit of dimers in there, I think as well. I'm not really sure, mm-hmm. something like that, you know. But like, oh, really, really good. And then that leads you into the lead. The lead is super. I love the lead. Love the lead. Love also. The, there's there's a majestic two twin lead sections. Yeah. yeah, which are just like you know, and like which is like, kind of like peak maiden, but. Modern. I think it's peaker than peak me. Yeah. yeah. I, th- I think it's more ambitious. It is know. more ambitious. There's um, something, some quasi medieval sounding about it yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You know, Which I'll mention in our couple of tracks too. Yeah. But yeah, yeah um, very good. Very good. Even the end of it is very good. You know, but, mm-hmm. is it the best song on the album? It, it's not far off. Well, well, I suppose we'll talk about that at the end. Yeah, right? I know. It, 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 but, it, it, but I would have told. Yeah, I would have said. I would have said it was my favorite track before I get back into it. I suppose, but it's a fucking brilliant it's a song. Br- brilliant song. Yeah. Big crescendo chorus. Yeah, um, you know, it's an absolutely stunning song. Yeah, uh, and you're kind of just yeah, it's going really good. wow at <laughs> yeah. this point. You uh-huh. know, this is. Um, you thought accident of birth was great but yeah I, I think three songs in and for me it's like this is this unlike is anything i've heard yeah. mm-hmm. before so um track four track four killing floor <laughs> uh, uh Satan! <laughs> sorry this is a uh, adrian smith's first writing cre- credit so this is yep. a bruce smith composition oh man love it four minutes 29 <laughs> Uh, really heavy. It's like a hammer in the face. It's like a hammer in the face. Almost Pantera. Yes, yeah. intro. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know. God, yeah. It makes you, yeah. It just makes you want to break. Something. And then this riff. The, the guitar chord hangs, and then yeah. Smith hits this riff, Chunk. which is just so yeah. heavy. Yeah. Um, and actually, it's a bit brighter than a thousand suns, which uh, from Maiden's Future. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. And yeah. Yeah. Passion deal. Yeah, uh, there's a bit of this yes. in, in there as well. But way heavier. Uh, but this is way heavier. This mm-hmm. is way way heavier. It's such a heavy riff. It's madness. This song's madness. I think it's a, you know, it just it's mad. It's mad how heavy it is. It's uh, mad how it is an aggressive song. Yeah. Yeah. Mad how aggressive it is, and um, it's. Just, I, I do like, like one, two, three, four punch. I'd say I really well, like it. Definitely. You know, um, I really like this song as well. You know. Well, it's a brilliant song. Yeah. What well, one of the things that loves uh, I, I love about this song is you've got you've got that intro, you've got this really crushingly heavy riff, and then they kind of just groove the riff, take yeah. it down a little bit to go into yes. the verse, uh-huh. and and Bruce is singing in this. I suppose it's mid register. Yeah. And then they go into this. Well, they they cycle it round again. And the second time they then go into this pre-chorus bridge, which is kind of eerie yeah. and dark. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's like part... A sort of it's like bit, a yeah. nightmare yeah. scenario, mm-hmm. yes. Um, yeah. It is nightmarish, uh, madness type thing. But I, I I love how you can hear this as a vocalist really stretching himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Oh, not yes. that part. Mm-hmm. I, I, it just, it's like, well, I've never heard Bruce quite sing like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, that bit, yeah. See his haunted gaze and all yes. that uh-huh. kind of part. It's just, it, it, it's just different, uh, in a in a great way. He's yeah. trying new things. Yeah, uh, and this he's is... got the perfect canvas for it. Totally. Yeah, it is. It's like having the keys, keys to the shop, and 
told to do whatever you want in the shop, the guitar shop, the sweet shop, whatever it is you're into. It's just perfect. The music for shop, him. It's you know, perfect. It's great, and it just it's a man that is but has no shackles. No, he's he's just been unleashed. Yeah. He's in top form, and then the Satan chorus is yeah. is the Satan chorus uh, is class. ridiculous, dark, heavy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not my favorite part of the song. It's not my favorite part of the song either. I think yeah. that the pre-chorus actually is Mine's that, that solo. dark, eerie bit. Um, solo is fantastic. The solo well. is like somebody put Jimi Hendrix mm. in a blender. It's, it's as I read here. <laughs> honest to God, it's so good. Uh, Twisted Nightmare, Pam. The solo is a wild Hendrix nightmare with a million Marshall four by twelves. That that is. That is a just cool. not the, you know the note that they hit <laughs> yeah. the bend it but they take it past the natural bend yes and I'm yeah, going yeah, yeah. and I'm like Jesus that is a, like whoa imagine you seeing that live you know yeah oh my god your face brilliant. would be literally slipped it's off great, your skull great description of, of some brilliant guitar work on rate like say. just like one note mm -hmm. one note and I am gone I'm like that is brilliant mad. Brilliant. Yeah. 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 I, I'm not going to try and follow and that the, description. The, that the, is... produ the production of that, the production on that itself, it was Jimi Hendrix at Woodstock, Star Spangled Banner. Mm -hmm. the only thing I ever heard close to that, well, that sound. Kind of sound. And it was live and it was one stand up cabinet. You know what I mean? Yeah. But this was so much more. Takes its inspiration from it, I think, to be perfectly honest. With you. Yeah. But that's, Jesus. That's a really good, good call. Do you know what I mean? Like, Man, whoa. Good call. It was like, it's like, whoa, hello. That's you know, and I'm not even going hello on every track. <laughs> but, That's a really uh, interesting observation, right? Yeah. I have to have to say. And and if you haven't watched <clears throat> the Ed Factor before, me and Chris don't discuss. Oh, why? That's right. Yeah. What our our notes beforehand? We we purposely don't talk about it. So yeah, it's you get little surprises. Like yeah. This. So uh -huh. Great description. Man. Yeah. Great great call. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. <laughs> Brilliant track. Brilliant. And the, the end of it as well. The harpsichordy bit. And all, yeah, mm -hmm. really cute. Just love it. Synthy. Whoa. Just love it. Love it. Brings it from the intro again. Then we've got mm -hmm. <laughs> the next track. Yeah, the harpsichord bit. Yeah. With all the whoa woes. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's is magic. It's just it's just absolutely like, magic. And then it just takes you back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> then, yeah. yeah. I, I I that's a something that's done throughout this album that there's that nod to traditional folk absolutely music yes that 100%. grounds the album and the concept of of, 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 of Blake. Blake it connects yeah. it to that time to the old England to yeah. the old England mm -hmm. and it gives That's the it. whole album yeah, yeah. The, that authenticity it does um, mm -hmm. and it's done so well yeah uh, that, that could have easily backfired and, and sounded like you know Stonehenge or something really cheesy or you know something off Fertile Lab so some stuff of virtual lab. Well, some of the, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. It was a terrible keyboard playing <laughs> in virtual lab, and as we we both agreed on that, yeah. whether whether this is the opposite end of the spectrum, it's done brilliantly. Yeah, um, it really is. You know, fa fan fantastic, Unreal. fantastic. So, next track. We're only on track five. We're only on track five, and so uh, four absolute bangers already. So, and this is the book. <laughs> The Book of Thel. I don't even want to talk about this song, but which is so a Dickinson, Roisy, Casillas, <coughs> yep, um, composition, and it's the longest track in the album at eight minutes thirteen seconds. From note one, it feels epic. This is epic. The the the, the brooding bass, yeah. um, intro, swelling cymbals. It just so, immediately sounds. That's Adrian Smith playing the lead at the beginning. Yeah. Couldn't it couldn't be anybody else, you know, and that's I'm pretty sure it's Adrian. Oh, yeah. it couldn't be anybody yeah. else. It's just it's that uh, the way you can take like a, a natural blues like um, scale mm -hmm. and just make it sound fabulous in the context of metal. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, 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 um, yeah. Really, really good. It's. <clears throat> Yeah, this this song is. There's a lot to say about this song. Yeah. I suppose it's it's it, this is a huge. It, right, it, it 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 has that bit. Yeah, and then we have this sledgehammer yeah. heavy riff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, another sledgehammer. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, and the piano, dun, 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 piano. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
because it's kind of bass and piano playing yeah. this motif, isn't it? Uh, and then off it goes. It's into this mad. supercharged yeah. madness. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I mean, love the vocal, love the the uh, the melody on it. The, the, <laughs> I guess it was melody is a funny word. Didn't talk about something so brittle and fast and and heavy, but the melody, on it, you know, <laughs> dun, 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 dun. oh, really good. The, this the, I have written here has Bruce Dickinson ever sounded better? Yeah, than this track. I'd be honest the, with you. Um, I mean, yeah, with some more songs to discuss, yeah, and yeah. We'll, we'll maybe come back to that. But this is absolute a hundred percent Dickinsonian thunder. Yeah, <laughs> Dickinsonian thunder is right. It, it, it is what this is, uh, and it's of course it's about you know, <clears throat> a, you know, fucking bizarre <laughs> poem, which is about the rejection of the Church of England. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Of course it is. <laughs> you know, uh, a, a visit of the oh. unborn spirit visiting the underworld of generation. Oh, uh, Thel rejects the self-sacrificing aspects of experience and flees back to eternity. As you do. That's what apparently the poem is about. <laughs> I have no idea what it's actually really about. The lyrics are bizarre and weird, but somehow that doesn't matter. No, you're not listening to the... Well, you're listening to the lyrics, but you're amazed at the performance. The delivery. The delivery. Uh, it's uh, just... And the range here, uh, and it's just got... Vocally, it's just got everything. Yeah, it does. And, um, and no one else could sing this song. No way. You know, from yeah. the from the soaring vocals to the, the, the sneer of the rotten yeah. <laughs> core... To the, it, 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 the woes to the it, it just yeah, um, I'm talking about the yeah the brilliant instrumental section yeah, uh, with the trademark woes yeah it's about the four minutes fourteen I've written down here yeah it's just it was stunning harmonies yeah it's, it's it's almost like he listened to Queen's Prophet song and went yeah oh, we'll throw a little bit of <laughs> multi layered woes in, um but with this bizarre medieval twist yeah, um. It's just again Bruce using his range, actually like never before. Yeah, uh, I, it's nearly like a classical piece. It's nearly like a um, a suite, really. You yeah, know what I mean, there's it's a suite of me middle aged, middle ages toned metal. Yeah, Peak Dickinson. Talk about again. It. Yeah. It's just that, that there's there's yeah, and uh, they they, I mean guitar work is blistering. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, it's so good. Um. And the outro melody. I love it. I love it. By the dawning of the dead. Yeah. I mean, one of the things I love about that part uh, and other parts of this album, but in the 90s, right, it was kind of framed that uh, Bruce and those type of vocalists didn't sing with emotion. Right. And that, okay. And that, you know, God, grunge had emotion. Aye, Eddie but, Vedder had emotion. You know, but yeah, yeah, Eddie Vedder had emotion, but, you know, like Bruce Dickinson doesn't have emotion. That was kind of like a, a snooty Aye. rock critic thing at the time. Or, like he was a pantomime villain or something like that. There's a bit yeah. of that yeah. to, to sneering at metal yeah. and that type of music. Maybe not so much in other parts of the world. Depends where you're you're watching this from. Mm -hmm. But um, certainly in the British media yeah. in the UK, um, we would have had that kind of. Uh, totally. Wouldn't we? Yeah, but it's sort um, of like a bit of a parody now. Yeah, because I mean? metal was out of out of fashion, and probably in the states yeah. it would have been the other place. But um, yeah, but, but like I'm sorry, the emotion and. These uh, and particularly that outro, yeah, it's just it's full of emotion. How yeah. anyone could say otherwise is is just beyond me. It's um, incredibly it's a stunning vocal. Yeah, it's just an incredible. Incredible. Why incredible. are you not listening to? It? Are you not, turn off and listen. Turn this off and go and listen to it now. Yeah, <laughs> stop listening. to Welcome this back. Go <laughs> listen to the the chemical wedding. Yeah. Um, no, of course. Continue listening to us, <laughs> and then go listen to the chemical end, and then Brown, come back and listen to Arthur us Brown at the end. Arthur Brown at the end, great point. Uh, yeah, and the 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 uh, the link back to Bruce's influences because he saw yeah busy world of Arthur Brown at college mm -hmm. or school. He went to like a he went to a school a boarding school a boarding school. That's yeah. what I was saying. Yeah. And, and 
the in the crazy world of Arthur Brown played it, and that was one of the things that I I don't know what documentary it was, but he did say mm-hmm. it was one of the biggest influences on him. Yeah, Arthur so Brown cool was. Yeah, he sang Fire. Yeah. And then, yeah, in the 60s. Was yeah, it? Well, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Um, Avant garde, you know, mad. Slightly mad. Pyrotechnics. It's. An influence on me. Like, I think it was the early days. Influence actually. on Bruce. I think yeah. he said he, he met him randomly. Yeah. So I'm performing at some outdoor park or something yeah. like that. And he, anyway, subtle kind of went, it's Arthur Brown. <laughs> What's he doing performing ear type thing? And went over, yeah. didn't he? And kind of waited for him to finish. And as he got speaking to him, kind of introduced himself. And went, oh, I kind of uh, might have stole your act <laughs> <laughs> slightly. I, you, I kind of have you to thank for having a career. The whole kind of, you know, that's the the Bruce's stage yeah. act. Yeah. Is very much based on. If you watch uh, Arthur Brown just fire, just type that yeah. into YouTube, uh-huh. you'll immediately see Bruce's. Stage movements yeah. are very much based on on Arthur Brown. Uh, so the spoken word parts in this album, he got Arthur Brown to Did na- them? narrate, and, and cool. he's got this wonderful deep yeah voice, the English accent. I very it fits I, like a glove. Not, I, I it's not not regional. It's just a nice standard English accent. Yeah, mm-hmm. with uh, smooth speech. deep voice. Yeah, like a Christopher Lee sort of sort of vibe. vibe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It just fit. It's perfect. Yeah, it's perfect it for it. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, and but even having that in this song makes it even better. It, like it, it gives so it cool. gives it another another layer, another of, layer. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, this wonderful piano outro. Yeah, and Arthur Brown speaking some William Blake. Yeah, it? so it's exactly just it is, yeah. yeah, it's uh-huh. it just again adds more authenticity to it. Yeah. It's just like wow, that is so cool. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I mean, what this isn't is. How do I put this? We were quite harsh on Virtual Eleven. We put it a, a bit. It it sounded yeah. uninspired. It sounded uninspired. Good you know, tracks. There were some good tracks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but but in comparison, and I know we probably shouldn't compare, but it's hard no. not to. Uh, this is this is bursting with ideas. Yeah, and bursting with originality. Yeah, it is. Um, and, and yeah, there's I, not there's no shackles on it. No, there's no we should sound like this. There's no. What do the fans want? Yeah, no, yeah. No, yeah. It, it, it's it, this is a, a it's a wonderful piece of art. Yeah, just as as an album, it's a piece of art. It, 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 it is it's yeah. just phenomenal. Um, track number six. These two sort of segue quite nicely into each other. I think you know um, they they do, and we've yeah. had five pretty full on tracks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. Some of them have great ebb and flow and stuff, but after particularly after. Book of Fell, which is so crushingly heavy yeah. and, and, and long and full on. Um we, we now take it down yeah. a bit. And this this is the um it, the album takes a slight turn into more melancholic yeah. um ballad esque, perhaps. Yeah. But yeah, you could say the same thing happened in accident at a birth a wee bit too. So yeah, and a welcome. It's a welcome mm-hmm. shift. A welcome yeah. change of gear. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. a- absolutely. Um Gates. Gates of your eyes. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Another, <laughs> another Bruce Roisey composition. Again, four minutes twenty-five. Every um, chorus in this so- album, you can't not sing. Yeah, it, yeah. The cor- the the hooks are all there. The vocal yeah. hooks are all there. Um, lovely. Above, d- so below. Yeah, beautiful intro. Yeah, nice, dark but beautiful. Yeah. That melancholy vibe of the verse, which has just got nailed throughout yeah. this album. Um, and then huge chorus. Yeah, really good. Really good. Yeah. Um, so I, d- I found a wee bit. I've actually found mm-hmm. like a, an, an academ- a, academical journal. Academic, academic journal. Academic journal mm-hmm. or about this. Okay. About yeah. your eyes and, and about Bruce Dickinson. Right. So oh, I'm going to cool. read you an excerpt if you don't mind. Go for it. I know so usually, you're usually the, the, uh, the one scholarly one, one, but <laughs> no, I've been doing a bit of digging myself. <laughs> Your Eyes and the protagonist of William Blake's The First Book of Horizon in 1784 mm-hmm. is a dark character who represents tyranny, suppression and reason. Mm-hmm. While Your Eyes and retells events in the form of a book depicting an unchangeable past, Bruce Dickinson's song Gates of Your Eyes and Canada mm-hmm. Wedding 1988 concentrates on enlightenment and the escape from your eyesanic restrictions. Both focus on contrasts, imagination and reason, open space and enclosure, mind and body, mobility and fixture, success and failure, 
Whereas the separation of countries' loss in horizon leads to misery and chaos in horizon, it produces positive results and gains. Dickinson's mm -hmm. adaptation changes the outcome of your horizon and turns the plot into practical advice on how to pass the gates of your horizon. By comparing metaphors of imprisonment and freedom in both texts, such as impaired vision and prophetic sight, or the contrast between being earthborn and airborn, mm -hmm. I shed light on how Gates turns a dystopic mythology into a philosophy of life. Lovely. That's from, I mm -hmm. just have to quote that. Quote your source, uh, yes. Quote my source, like all good students should. That's from the Blake Quarterly, number 54, volume three, or sorry, volume 54, number three, winter 2021. And I've written after it, the bloody core. <laughs> Because the course is immense. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, the, uh, you go, so it's all there. Yeah, really. Again, Every, the I thought that was all, like such a there. great description. I'm yeah. like, it is. It, it does take what the original text does and turn it into a more hopeful thing. A more hopeful thing. Yeah. Because yeah. your eyes is about logic. He's like brooding. Ah, and that's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. to a rock. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's yeah. his, his character. Uh, but yeah, which is that, that's kind of classic, Bruce. You think of uh, Flight of Icarus. Yeah, that's right. He took that story, but he put his own little spin on the myth. Absolutely. He didn't mm -hmm. just tell them the myth yeah. as mm -hmm. it was. He did his own little thing with it. Um, uh, you know, Revelations, which yeah. itself is Blake inspired, perhaps as his own I little spins on it. So, <laughs> so yeah. I mean, uh, my uh, I mean it, it's it's classic Bruce storytelling. Isn't it really it? is. Um, it's fabulous. F fabulous track, Lo love the track. I, I don't even. Uh, it's good this days where I'm listening to this album. I don't even know what track I'm on, what number I'm on. This is number of, six. Right, great. So, like, if this was old school, you had the tape. You're on side two already, and you're like, none of the first side was crap. No. When was the last time in the nineties you listened to an album and none of the first side was crap? Rage Against the Machine, first Rage Against the Machine album on a tape. That's all I can think of. Yeah. So <laughs> we're it, not territory like. It's yeah, it's kind of like it's flawless up yeah. to this point, you know. Yeah, um, yeah and a, a, a gorgeous solo, very good, just beautiful. Yeah, uh -huh. I, I agree. Lo really lovely minimalist solo yeah. here. Um, mm. Very few notes, but yeah, not again, nothing's aggressive. It's just just right for the track, playing to the yeah, song. It's, you know? it's, it just it, wa it doesn't waft along, but it does. It sort of brings you. It, it's like going down a river. Mm -hmm. So it is drifts. Yeah, like I'm being on a lazy river of metal. <laughs> we'll go with that. Right, we'll, yeah. we'll go with that. Um, next track. No. Next track is uh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem, yeah. and this is written by Bruce Dickinson, Roy Z, and William Blake. <laughs> William Blake. He's been. He's only got a bloody crap. He's got album. a co-write. Uh, <laughs> so um, six oh, minutes. Let it rain. <laughs> right enough. Six minutes forty two of giving sixty minutes forty two yes of Dickinsonian wonder. I love That's it. What this is. Absolutely um, love it. This song will I go first? Go, I'm just going to, I work away. I'm just gonna be a first if I'm just gonna go first. Okay. I I think this song is possibly the greatest vocal of Bruce Dickinson's career. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um I think it's a stunning vocal. Brilliant. Yep, it really is. Um the word citadel never sounded so good. Never sounded so good. But the range yeah. here, uh, Ro Roisey in particular gives him just such, I've uh, used the phrase canvas to, to work on with this, but the, the mandolin playing, yeah. the, 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 the whole, the music is just beautiful. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Authentic. That is gorgeous. Taps into the world of, of Blake. And what Bruce does with this track is he kind of, I think he said he wanted to do Blake's Jerusalem credit. And it, it's sung as a hymn now and it's kind of associated with jingoism and yeah, patriotism and, England and all. Rugby team as well. And England yeah. rugby team and all that. And yeah. Bruce Dickinson says he thinks William Blake would be appalled by that actually because it, it's more about... Um, you know, the romantics yeah. um rebelliousness about the the rejection of materialism yeah. and um that 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 kind of kind of thing you know um it's an anti-materialist song yeah 
Uh, you have to remember someone who's living in the Industrial Revolution, through the Industrial Revolution. Um, so it, it, this is more what he calls the, the, like his pagan alchemical verse that I thought he wrote. Um, <laughs> the vocal, the vocals are just from a singing point of view, are just stunning. Yeah, they're really just such power and beauty and grace. I think the vocal just has it all, and you it's don't, rock you don't, with emotion. You don't really, you don't really, you know how good he is as a vocalist for years. He's been so good, but this is controlled. It's all his own. There's nobody in the background telling him what he should be doing. And he's come up with that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's really just... And not saying knocked it out of the park. It's just dominant with fame praise. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and yeah, it's interesting to say there's no one telling him what, what to do. It, it, it's... I I'm, think it, I'm alluding to like Martin Birch and the whole screen. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I was, was going to say was that it shows how well him and Roy Z work together and how Roy Z is a producer and his mate yeah. just knows how to get the best mm -hmm. out of him mm -hmm. or, it, it, you know, the two of them work brilliantly together. Aye, they do. They you, do. You, you know. Um, they genuinely really do. Because mm -hmm. the production in this is ace. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely ace. And somehow, I mean, how do you take a, a you know, it's Aye, a, a bizarre book. idea. A school book hymn. Basically a school, yeah. what, what, school book, yeah. old English hymn and turn it into this kind of semi- medieval sounding mandolin hymn song that yeah. turns into a metal semi half epic yeah it, it, mm -hmm. it shouldn't work but, yeah, it, but does. it does you know so well. as a concept it, this should this could have died in its ass terribly oh yeah but it's amazing and it could have been a parody and it could have been seen as what the, what does he do and he's completely irrelevant and but the, you it's know, amazing. It's yeah. just an amazing, amazing song, and and I've I've actually nothing else to really say. Yeah, well, the, about like, it. Uh, one thing it brought so out good. me was I love Led Zeppelin four, and it brought mm. out bits of it. Right. You know, okay. And I'm thinking um, to myself, you know, it's it's fabulous that not sounding any way similar, but it brought you back to that. You know that like stairway. No, not mean? no, no, no. No. Is that force? I know what it, oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. I know the album and set it back to front, but there's definitely parts on it. Um, is it four sticks? Okay. Um, I can't remember what it was, but four something. Four sticks is. Do, 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 no, it's not four sticks. What's the it? one with the? The one with the the mandolin. Do, 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 do. Can't figure it out. Don't, don't know. Can't mind. I'll put it along there on the bottom on the metal. Tangent. No. It's too many Led Zeppelin songs. Mm. Too many, don't yeah. matter. Don't want to talk about it. Just, it but brought that to me. The yeah. Mando. Yeah. Mando. The, the, Mando. Mando. Yeah. Yeah. Mando playing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Led Zeppelin Mando playing. Yeah. Well, kind just, of uh, but, and the fact that Led, I always thought Led Zeppelin had that. Oh, there's a link. There's Crowley. There's all this. Aye. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, there, yeah. there, there, is, there is that. And they recorded that, it in. They didn't record it in Crowley's house. They didn't record it in Crowley's house. No. Forget that. But, but um, there's a the, there's a link there. Ah, yeah, that old England, that old England, old English, um, yeah, um, like um, ingrained sort of, you know, mm -hmm. because like as we quote there, a very quick one from Bruce I got from an interview from '98. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to sing a hymn called Jerusalem at school, mm -hmm. with the words by William Blake, and there's a cover of an Atomic Rooster album that I had called Nebuchadnezzar, a William Blake painting, mm -hmm. and the inner sleeve was my introduction to Blake. Now fast forward twenty years, and I'm researching alchemy. So, you know what I mean. But like, the alchemy is is there. It's yeah. fabulous. It, it's fab fabulous. It really is. It really is. I've dropped my notes. I'm so excited. Ah, uh, you're okay. You're all right. Uh, <laughs> just, just, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> next, I slept on the next track. Next track. We're on the tra track. I don't think we can say anything else about Jerusalem because no. it's just absolutely stunningly, stunningly good. Um, <sighs> yeah, it's amazing. Next track, track eight. Then the trumpets yep. of Jericho. Yep. Mm -hmm. We're back into heaviness. Yep. We're back into biblical references and double kick. Detuned. Detuned. Double kick. It's really heavy. It's it, again. It's, it's it's Pantera heaviness. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. Um. 
What a it's a Bruce Dickinson Roisy yeah um composition five minutes fifty nine. What I love about this song, apart from the really cool riff, yeah, is um I love how the lyrics in this song really more vividly <laughs> probably than any of the others really yeah. paint pictures. Yeah, yeah. There's something about the lyrics that are very clear in this yeah. song, uh, and and um. I think this is a song about failure. Right, okay. And I think this is another example of Bruce. I'm not sure whether he's done this or whether this was uh, a, a Blake thing. I'm, I'm I'm not really sure. But um, so the, you the know walls the of Jericho. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh -huh. uh, but but the walls fall. They do, yeah. Mm -hmm. In this song, the walls remain. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the point of the song. Yeah. It's about failure because um, alchemists always feel that's right so no one's that, ever turned at the gold no yet. one ever you know or the or, elixir of life or whatever yeah or the philosopher's like stone or whatever yeah, it, fair it, enough. there's yeah they, they invariably feel yeah so that's what this song is about facing that that yeah that, that, that failure um hence the line at the end of the song still the walls re remain. remain um yeah. great chorus yeah and, and I, I i love the um the painting pictures, you know, the the of the like Atlas stands and laughs, yeah. throws his burden down. Yeah. There's so many little lines that just give you these little images in yeah. your head. Um and I, I I love that about the song. Yeah. Um I think it's got cool verses. Yeah. I think it's got a really powerful chorus. I think it's got a fantastic breakdown yeah. at the three minute mark okay. with that kind of mocking you. Yeah. Thing and the laugh, yeah, you know, yeah. the classic Dicky laugh is in there, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, again, showing uh, shows of his vocal versatility, right. it's like, okay. you, you know, uh -huh. um, to take <clears throat> off for granted, like, you know, how many vocalists can do all those yeah. kind of things, yeah. uh -huh. you, you know, uh -huh. um, it's just another, yeah, thing that uh -huh. he can do, um, quite a simple solo. Yeah, which it's more because it's quite broke. The song is kind of broke down a little bit at that yeah. point, uh, and it's it's a less is more solo. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I like how the guitar work in this album can go from quite blistering yeah, to yeah, yeah. just yeah. a few notes. Yeah, and I, I think again, there's an absolutely superb outro melody. There's still the yeah. walls remain. I think uh -huh. it's just such a soaring melody it's, it's terrific it's terrific yeah no I, I have to say this will be the lowest point of the album for me. really yeah really I, right, okay. I don't I, I think for the time for the it's nearly six minutes long uh -huh. right I, I don't think it says an awful lot whereas the other ones would have done in like four the first two uh, it's a great okay. now, I'm only like it's like um, nitpicking nitpicking. It is nitpicking. Okay. okay but I do think uh, uh, it's not my it would probably be the in my, my least opinion, favorite, least favorite. Yeah. Okay. Fair Not enough. that I'm saying that I don't like it. Like I'm singing the trumpets of Jericho, and yeah, that, yeah. You know what I mean. But you it's know, a strong track, but not. Yeah. So, if that was on Virgin Island, opinion. you would have said it was brilliant. You yeah. know what I mean. <laughs> the best song. It's the what album. it's surrounded. Yeah, it's what it's surrounded by. It is. It's what it's surrounded by. Yeah. But uh -huh. yeah, I don't really have an awful lot to say about it. You know, it's catchy chorus. Um, I, what I wrote here was not the most arresting track on this album. So fair enough. You know, fair enough. Uh, yeah, you love it. It's great. You said all you need to say about it, which is fabulous. And you're quite right. And a lot of people do. Looking at reviews, like mm -hmm. online reviews, do love this track. So, yeah. Yeah. And just for me, it just kind of feels like, you know, after Jerusalem, you know what I mean? Like, where do you go? Yeah. You know? So but, I guess it's a good choice, though. Ah, okay. Of, Brings you back into it, yeah. You know, and uh, interesting, uh, it opens Scrubs up. Scrubs you like Scruffle and Ack again, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. and it opens up the uh, Scream For Me Brazil yeah, the album. album. Yeah, it's the first mm -hmm. track off. Yeah. I don't actually know. I should have looked at this whether what what the set list for this tour was. Yeah, maybe look at that before. I um, on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but um, no, fair. Yeah, fair, no, fair I, point. I, I, you know, of an album which we have been completely for, mm -hmm. this is just a wee sort of, you know. But anyway, almost machine man. Almost machine head. I, uh, yeah, machine. Man, is a, a, it's an H classic. It's an H classic. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah uh, Smith Bring Dickinson. The toys out for the ball. Oh, uh, yeah. Five minutes forty-one. Yep. Uh, and for me, yeah, this song. I couldn't find anything online about what this song is about. Yeah. But for me, this is uh, uh, against uh, the industrial revolution. Right. Okay. That's what environmental. This, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, 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 it's that's what this song yeah. is is about because mm-hmm. um, I, I think he wrote a poem called London, right? Which okay. was um, against industrialization, industrialization. Uh-huh. Uh, and numerous others. Works yeah. so apparently it was a theme. So I think this song is about that uh, and about how what would have then been a new and modern way of life is um, from a human point of view yeah. built on feet of clay. It okay. won't bring you happiness. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think uh-huh. that's the point of the song. It's like, I be careful what you wish for, but not in that way, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, You're not going to get the satisfaction that you think. And it's yeah. just... Yeah, uh, I, that that's that's what I think. Um, musically, uh, it's such a cool intro. Oh, it's great. Straight yeah. in. Uh-huh. <laughs> great is. riff. Um, cool verse. Yeah. Uh, and the chorus is just majestic. Yeah, I love the, the chorus. Is again, track nine, eight out of nine. No, yeah. Nine out of nine choruses are great. Even Thomas yeah. of Jericho, you sing it too. But yeah, this is um, this is great, this one. Yeah, I, I do think it's... Um, Again, if you had this on a main album, you'd be like, wow, <laughs> two minutes to midnight. It's it's magic yeah. track. It, yeah. I, this is a magic track. Yeah, I, I love it. particularly love, again, the pre-chorus bit. Uh, the first time there's no real vocals in it. Yeah. Then it goes the chorus. Then the second time round, there is a vocal uh-huh. line in it. All that turn nightmare into day yeah. thing and all these sounds. Phenomenal, yeah, he does. So he does. Um, it's going just like it. he is going for it, and I also really love the uh, what I think is an intentional dig the iron in the soul. I think that's yeah. a Ali, little, Ali cheeky one. little cheeky uh-huh. dig at, at, at Maiden. Yeah, uh, I may be wrong, but I think Bruce, yes, I think you're right, couldn't help himself. Yeah. Uh-huh. He knew that he knew what he was sitting on here. I think he, yeah. I think he had decided like he's angling for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's decided he's back in metal. Yeah, yeah. Um, Great track. It's a brilliant track. Absolutely yeah. first class. Yeah, track. It is. Uh, a- amazing and uh, anything to add? Just I think it's fabulous. I really do. It's like, um, yeah. Um, I took. Uh, you're very right about the industrialization thing about. It. I, I sort of. I couldn't stop thinking about the core, the cannibals of rust, iron bites the dust. Mm-hmm. Another dig at me in, I was thinking, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, I was thinking about that, you know, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, no, um, really good, really, really good track. Um, better than Trumpets of Jericho. Um, so we're back up, back up again of my tiniest little dip. We're back up on par again, but no, mm-hmm. I love that does class. The, br- brilliant yeah. track. Um, mm-hmm. Great solo. Yeah, yeah. A br- brilliant solo. A real ripping solo. Actually. It's funny, like you know, it's nearly harder to say good things than it is to say yeah, bad. Just to say bad you things, know, it, it is because it, it just sounds like we're just gushing about it all yeah. the time. But uh-huh. I suppose we are. Um, the final track, oh. Is oh. the Alchemist. Uh, and uh, again, Bruce Roisey, and uh, depending on which version of the album you have, yeah, no. If you're listening on Spotify or something like that, it'll be uh, about I six a, minutes. I had it on a, Amazon, yeah. Um, whether if you've got like I had the original CD, it'll be eight and a half minutes or eight minutes. Because it's got like a couple of tracks. It's a got a hidden track, track, which isn't actually a hidden track. It's a it's a spoken word by Arthur Brown. Right, okay. Cool. There's a big gap. Oh, that stuff. Um, right. After the chemical wedding reprise, uh-huh. so oh. Um, yeah. Oh. But anyway, yes. Yeah, so so this song starts off with like a, an almost Orion esque guitar like a, riff. A, it's like a, um, a siren. Yeah, it's it's really really cool. Um, Again, I hear Sabbath in there too. I don't know what. Yeah, was it the wizard? Some, I don't know. Not the wizard. I like the wizard. I don't know, but not the wizard. If you know what I mean. Anything that Iron Maiden have done or Bruce has done that has the something like the magician, like the magician, uh-huh. right or whatever that was in yeah. Axe in the Birth. Yeah, I'm thinking cracking title. It's obviously going to be a good song. You know what I mean? Just by the title of it. So, and this album's all about alchemy. It's it, yeah. this album's all about alchemy. Yeah. Uh, of course, as we said. So, it, it, and this... you've got the distorted vocal and the clear vocal. I love yeah. that. At yeah, the, so at the yeah. start. It's class. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. And for me, this is this is an 
a rather epic way to finish the, yeah, this this song. It is. Uh-huh. Sounds grandiose. It sounds like it's asking the ultimate question. Yeah. Uh, 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 about the universe. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, it's, 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 it's the alchemist bearing its bearing yeah. his soul, yeah. mm-hmm. a, a, asking, "What is the answer? What is the think? answer?" Yeah. Type thing. I yeah. think that's mm-hmm. and there's a real grandiose mystery and beauty about the whole track uh, I think is particularly it's cinematic in the chorus yeah. it's mm-hmm. cinematic mm-hmm. it sounds huge mm-hmm. yeah. and uh, Bruce sounds absolutely phenomenal yeah totally. yeah he's just he's incredible soaring he's in an album where he is consistently incredible, incredible. he's incredible he's <laughs> incredible <laughs> It's stunningly good. Yeah. It's stunningly yeah. good. Absolutely. And the, the strings that are oh, locked into yes. this are yeah. just... They just comes in. So good. And then, you know... And I heard it. The first time I heard it, I didn't know we were going to go back to Chemical Land. Mm. And I was like... God, the reprise. Stop. The song yeah. reprises yeah. and does like a, a, a tender version yeah. of the Chemical Wedding. Stop Wedding. that. And it's... <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's reminiscent of this, the, the, seven the Deadly Sons, Sun, yeah. Seven Deadly Sins yeah, yeah, part, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. and it just, it's those wee touches that on a concept album, yeah, make it the concept Abandon album work. Yeah, exactly. And that is a wonderful That's touch in, in this brilliant. track. It's just absolutely it fantastic. Doesn't even, it's not even seven minutes song. It's not even an Ed Factor epic, but it is epic. Yes, as in an Ed Factor epic is defined as a maiden track, or an track, or an yeah. track that is it's over seven, seven minutes. minutes long. Yeah, um, and. Of epic scope, yeah. But this, this is well without the spoken word. But it's only six minutes. Uh-huh. So, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it wouldn't qualify. Yet no. it sounds so huge. Yeah, and they got the choral bit that goes in with the orchestra, orchestral bit, and all. Oh god, it's so good. And uh, I'll yeah. hurl it back, and yeah. all there's that soul searching, rejection, and everything. It's just got it all. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah. it's an answer to so life. Good. You know what I mean? Oh, you have questions? You get listen to this album. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a masterpiece of a track. Yeah, I, 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 I think, and I, I just, uh, it's a track that keeps giving as yeah. well. The mm-hmm. more you listen to it, you just go, wow! It's yeah. just absolutely terrific. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> So that's it, is it? Have we that, done? That, that is it. Yeah. That is a track yeah. by track uh, oh, guide. That... So, oh, yeah, I mean, me. uh, I'm just going to look at something. Should we try and well, do I was a go... bit of a sum up? Yeah, or... sum up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll uh-huh. go first because I know you're going to say more, I think, because I know how much you absolutely love it. But a um, couple of things about the album to sum up. Um, mm-hmm. Number one, I, I'm sure you've guessed. We think it's brilliant. I think it's brilliant. <laughs> um, the production, which you haven't t- we've talked t- talked about a wee bit, is a massive improvement on a- anything we've heard from Maiden, and it's an improvement on Accident of Birth, mm-hmm. slightly. Um, yes. If I was being really, 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 really picky, it's a wee bit too compressed. But then that was the spirit of the era. You okay. Know, the, yeah. Uh, sound wise. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. But okay. it needs to be a thing because of the the depth of the metal. Depth of metal, no. <laughs> like Jack Black, the metal. <laughs> no, c- because of the depth of the, you don't want it to be sound sludgy. Mm-hmm. That's one thing that Roy Z does, which is absolutely incredible. This album, in the wrong hands, could have been sludgy as. Oh, it could have been but very, it is great. very muddy, you know, but really there's good. real clarity in the production. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah, I, I agree. fabulous. I agree. The, as as a concept mm-hmm. album, uh, you're talking ten years from Seventh Son. Mm-hmm. It's a logical successor to that. Yep. It's actually more of a concept album than that. Yep. So, um, this is a pure concept album. Mm-hmm. I think Bruce has created something which is absolutely stupendous. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love it. I think you know, to be down on Tom- Trumpets of Jericho, where if it was on any other album. You probably say it was one of the highlights, is it, <laughs> yeah, is it, yeah. and I'm not being funny. Yeah, I am. I'm not taking no, this. I, I, know, you know, I know where you're coming it from. Is, yeah. like mm-hmm. you stick that on any Maiden album from Seven Son of Seven Son, you go fuck a brilliant track, mm-hmm. really good song, mm-hmm. and I'm the one going, nah, it's alright. But you know, Bruce is forty, right? 
in this. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's over 40, probably just over 40. But, like, you know, he's so comfortable with himself. Um, I caught a wee interview with Tommy Vance that he did. Yeah. On The Rock Show. I saw that. Yeah, interview. did you? Yeah. yeah. And Tommy Vance says, this is the album that Iron Maiden should have made. Well, he says, this is the yeah. album that, <laughs> yeah, that Iron Maiden <laughs> should have made. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but Bruce is really magnanimous. Like, he's like, he yeah. takes it as a compliment. He doesn't say anything about it. You know what I mean? But well, he um, kind of... Sh- Kind of says to Tommy respectfully, "Yeah, I'm not gonna. Yeah, you know, uh-huh. don't don't uh, don't rag him." Kind of, but it's from his face, band. he's going like, "Yeah, but he's going, I know." <laughs> <laughs> but but um, yeah, um, it's brilliant. It's from start to end, it's brilliant. There's no filler in this album. Mm-hmm. There's really not any filler in this album. No, because you know, or anything which I would have deemed as a dip, I'm, I've said about twenty times already. I'm still singing a chorus of it, do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. In the car, in the shower, whatever, and mm-hmm. out and about. So I have to say um that this album is um this album is the best album of the nineties. Mm-hmm. You probably agree with me. Yes. I love it. I from abs- the maiden camp, you mean? Yeah, for, yeah. from but, but the thing the thing about it is, I'll let you speak now, you mm-hmm. you know. The thing about it is, it's, why is it not more? Why is it not more celebrated? I think it's, be, it's growing in stature and has grown romance, in stature. You know, I, I think, but it should have. Well, it should have grown by now. That's what I'm saying. But you know, over to you. Uh, okay. I have more to say. Okay, more, more to say. Um, well, I, I, I think this is the best, um, the best record that Bruce Dickinson's ever made. Apps, I agree totally, one hundred percent. And I don't just mean a solo work. Do you mean my in as well? Yes. Holy shit! Are I think okay? this is the best thing he has ever done. I think vocally, this, this is his greatest performance. We should call it the Bruce Factor. The Bruce Factor. Yeah. <laughs> this is his greatest performance. Oh, I I can't really argue with that. You know, uh, and the whole reason we're doing this podcast is because we're insanely huge Iron Maiden fans. Yeah. But. From vocal performance right, standpoint, enough. there is yeah. no Maiden album that Bruce Dickinson stretches himself to the extent that he does on this album. There is no Iron Maiden album where he sounds as powerful, as absolutely on top of his game. Uh, he just sounds unbeatable okay. here. Uh, this album is so good yeah. that Steve Harris... Had to bring him back. <laughs> right. I was going to talk about that in a wee minute. But yeah, go on ahead, keep going. But we've talked about how <clears throat> Steve stubbornness was a big part of ah, Steve's massive. character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what made him and that's what made Maiden. Uh-huh. Um, I have nobody, one point to add that, but yeah. a lot of after. Yeah. Nobody could see this reunion coming. Sure, 98. We didn't have a clue. But this album... Is what makes it happen. Yeah, this mm-hmm. album is so stunningly good. There's just nowhere else to go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Massively there's, agree. There's, yep. there's no. Mm-hmm. It makes it happen. It's yeah. unavoidable. Yeah. Because the album is so bloody good. Yeah. And Bruce knows it. I think so. He knows it. Yeah. Um. It, it is the best concept album he's ever made. Yeah. 100%. Without doubt, the concept is so tight. Um. Like we're saying, Seventh Son, the, the concept, it's its kind of, it's a concept album, but it's not really There's a concept album. There's too many people album. involved in that, I think, but yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just, like, I'm mean, Bruce Dickinson said, sometimes Maiden do that, where we kind of, you know, have a theme, and then there'll be a song about the Battersea Dogs yeah, or something yeah, on yeah, it, yeah, and yeah, uh-huh. go, why is that on there? Well, yeah. it just is, all right? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just like the Maiden way. Um, but, I mean, Seventh Son, it, it, it's a concept album, it's always held up as a concept album, but actually when you look at it, it's there, but it's not quite there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think Bruce has said that himself. I actually think Somewhere in Time is probably a stronger concept, concept album. album. because And the greatest album of our well, you, it's <laughs> your, yeah. <laughs> but because that thread of time yeah. is actually through every single... You can connect yeah. it to every single track. Absolutely, you can. Um, this... Everything connects. Yeah. Okay. Um. At all, oh, I don't. I disagree with you in any way. And anyway, everything yeah. connects. It's so good. I've already said vocally. Oh. I think it's his, his best performance yeah. because the range is there. The harmonies are yeah. just unbelievable. The power the is there. 
the writing. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, these songs are. I mean, this is ten brilliant songs. It is. Yep. Yeah. The but song crafting is yeah. perfect. Mm -hmm. Um, to, to, you know, and it's not every song isn't ten minutes or whatever. You know, no, it doesn't it's need compact. to be. This is an hour long album. Yeah. It, 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 it's it, it, it's just fantastic. Um, and hats off to Roy Z for the songwriting side of it. Absolutely. I think we kind of tend to we tend to say Roy's a great guitarist or Roy's a great producer. Teacher. He is all of those, but he's also obviously a brilliant songwriter. Yeah. Because I mean, he co-writes every single song bar one or two. Machine Man, Machine Man, and and um, is it? Killing Floor, yeah. So they're both. He co-writes everything, bar two, which yeah. are which are Smithy tracks. Yeah. So actually, on the face yeah. of it, you'd think Adrian Smith might be more involved in this. I was actually surprised when I looked at the writing. Yeah, he only he only writes two songs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, co-writer, co yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And it, so so it's Roy Z. But then when you take a when you take a, an objective step back on that, you can actually see, of course, mm -hmm. because that's not. That's not Adrian Smith's songwriting no. niche. Groove is not his niche. D sorry, Groove is his niche, mm -hmm. but that's not his niche right there. It's also not his project. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's r r yeah. it's Bruce and Roy's. Yeah, you know, yeah. and that it's yeah, yeah, it's as clear as day. But um, yeah, uh, and credit to the this is I think we had said an accident birth. What Br what Bruce had achieved was he had found himself because he'd got a fantastic band yeah. together. Uh, and that's obviously Roy, but also the rhythm section. Yeah, Eddie and Dave, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and they're just absolutely, they're even better in this album. I do the think so. The performances are just unreal. One of the things, was the drum performance in this album. Stunning. I love drums. I can't play them. He can't. But I love drums. I yeah. love a groove drum. The drum sound yeah. on this, yeah, it's brilliant. It's incredible. Even that snare Jeris has Jer such but even depth. Jeris Jerusalem has um, mm -hmm. like an in the room sound. Yeah, and yeah. I'm thinking to myself, why? And then when mm -hmm. you finish the song, you're like, of course, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. I, I noticed that definitely yeah. on the in yeah, Jerusalem. Yeah. It's like it's right. Literally, you're listening to it. He could be literally playing in front of me right now in my office or in the house or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. And that's and that, but it's so right. Yeah. The choices, every choice made in this album is um, extraordinarily, it's a craft, it's a thought process, but it's the right one. It's the right one. Every time. Yeah. Agreed, mm -hmm. agreed. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, it's just fantastic from start to yeah, finish. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I don't think there's a weak moment on it at all. Um, and we haven't stressed enough how good the lead work is either. No, the lead guitar works. There's, there's phenomenal. no, there's no. Um, we talked about the weak stratiness, like in virtual. Um, no, the production. I mean, it's. We do probably have to put this. It's it's inevitable. We have to say, compare this album to Virtual Eleven. Yeah. Uh -huh. There's no comparison, no, is there? None. This absolutely. I would have. I would have the. I would have the, epic tracks in this. The old epic, the epic tracks in Virtual Eleven. I, the epic, the epic tracks on everything that Maiden produced from nineteen ninety onwards. From, from yeah, yeah, fucking right. Like, it just Fear the Dark's good, but you know, this, this, it just it doesn't stand up to. It crushes it. Yeah, the the album just crushes it. Yeah, um, and largely that is to do with the production. If you've watched our Virtual Eleven episode, yeah. or if you haven't, you can you can check it out. Um, we really don't like the, the production of it. We think the it's a real yard. weak. Yep. Just yeah. a bad idea. Uh, it's a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and that really hinders and hampers Maiden's 90s output. Totally. Um, it's the main reason for the, the 90s output being questionable, shall yeah, we put it? It is. Um, and... You know, as much as we we think Blaze is great vocalist, and we do love him. Yeah, love him. Um, I think we've said that we feel that he never really got a great shot at Maiden yeah. because the albums, the production was hampered. And there's some there's some really great songwriting on yeah. X Factor, and there's some really good songs on Virtual yeah, Eleven as is. well. Mm -hmm. But writing great songs doesn't make a great album. True. You 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 got to do more. It's more you than that. The total package. It has to be the total package, yeah. and production is a huge part mm -hmm. of that. 
the production here absolutely slays it. Yeah. But the other thing is that Bruce Dickinson just reasserts himself. As Rock's greatest frontman. Metal's as greatest frontman. Metal's greatest vocalist. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, there's just, there's no one else can do what he does. No. And this is him on his absolute, yeah. unassailable A game. Yeah, A game. 100%. Um, an A game that I honestly, at the time, uh, I don't think anyone could have predicted he could have right. went to this level yeah. of A game. It's just another level. Yeah. Um, I, I think so. And, and one of the things, and we all know what happened after, but one of the things that I was thinking about when I was sort of thinking about summing up um, the other night was what was next? So if he hadn't have jo yeah. rejoined Maiden? Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I suppose that's one of those questions, isn't it? You, you, you know, I, I think from Bruce's point of view in his biography, he makes it pretty clear that he kind of knew that this album was so good, it was inevitable. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Way the Wind. The I think he says something like Bob Dylan knew which way the wind was always going to blow or something yeah. like that. And so, so did I. Um, things hadn't been so good in Maidenland and well there was really only a couple of things they could do and one yeah. of them was get back was me he knew this album was so good I think he was angling for it I think he was angling for it from accident of birth really do you think so I, I, I think potentially I, 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 yeah I, I think he thought getting Adrian back and all to make a heavy metal record I, 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 I think there was a little bit of well, we'll see how this goes, but Bruce is such a confident. He's he's yeah. he's so he's confident. Never, he's never he's never. I would always would have had him, and I think I've said this in previous episodes. Probably have, mm -hmm. where you know you're. He always needed somebody mm -hmm. to rein him in or to work with him, mm -hmm. and this is a complete contradiction of that. He doesn't need anybody in this album. He's got Roy. He's got Adrian. He doesn't need anyone else. He's got the idea, mm -hmm. the concept, the creativity, the just is flowing. Yep. And uh, it's something that Steve Harris hadn't had for a very, very for for a long time. decade. Yeah. For a 10 years. Yeah. And, yep. and as much you're quite right about Blaze and, you know, um, I, I, I don't buy into the fact that this Bruce is doing this. It's not calculated, I don't think. I think he maybe was so... Um, he could smell blood in the water, maybe. He wanted to be better. And with accent and the birth in this, he is... So he's... He's, he's not he, angling to come back. That's what I'm saying. He's not doing don't it going. think so? No, I don't. I, I think I, there's a little bit of... He, I think he, he wants to get to... one over on them, maybe. Uh, not wants to get one over on them. He wants to do better than them. He wants to do, you know... You wanted the out maiden, maiden. Yeah, you go nine, I'll go ten. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, that's what I mean. But the I don't think he's going. Yeah. God, you know, I really love to be back writing with Steve Harris or writing and with, you know, being I, in a band with Dave Murray. You know what I mean? I don't think so. I would beg to differ. Okay. I think that probably after doing the accident of birth album and tour, I think that Bruce realizes that as a solo artist, he can make great records. Yeah. Okay, uh, he knows he's got that, and he's got a great lineup and stuff now. But he also realizes that he can only ever play a certain size of venue. Okay. Because I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a massive name and it's a massive machine. No, they're not ninety eight, weren't they? They were playing to to thousands of people, a couple of thousand people. Yeah. What I'm saying is yes, but with you're twenty missing, five years of hindsight, you're missing the point though. Right, okay. With him, they could. Okay, yeah, well, fine. And I, I think he knew, you know, if you put me back, we're going with them, bigger. We can do football stadiums again. Uh, okay. We can do, and I, I, and I think coming in and making this album, I think he he has it in there. I'm not saying that's his sole reason for doing it. No, it's about artistic expression. It's his passion. It's it's blah blah blah, of course. And he wants to make a fantastic album. But there is a little bit of. There's a great awareness of what's happening mm. in Maiden World. Okay. And he and it's looking at it and going, right, what are they doing wrong? I mean, why did he leave? They're doing wrong because he left because they weren't making well-produced yeah. albums. Uh -huh. uh, he didn't like that studio 
uh, you yeah. know, it needed to sound heavy. They needed to move with the times a wee bit. Aye, they were so, in a rut. So he goes and he does yeah. all of those things. Mm -hmm. And it's and this album, it's like, it feels to me where he's went, right, well, hold on. If I go even heavier than the last time, yeah, you know, that's really going to... Beef the production up. Yeah, you know. Detune the guitars a bit. And, and he's now in Capture a... Capture the zeitgeist. He's in such a position of strength because he's got two... Probably made this album and on going on tour. He's probably sitting thinking to himself, I'm probably going to get a phone call from Rod Smallwood at some point. Yeah. I think he's thinking that. But he's thinking, so if that happens, great. We'll go and we'll, we'll oh, hammer Lord. it. We'll show the world. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. But if it doesn't, I've got a great band and a great lineup yeah, here. Yeah. And I can continue to build and make great albums okay. with them. Okay. So that, that's my take right. on that. Right, right. Okay. I have to sort of one thing I did and I kind of wish I hadn't have done mm -hmm. uh, it was actually last night I was up staying up pretty late last night and I was on YouTube and I was watching interviews I watched the videos of the tracks mm -hmm. Colin Floor and the tire and you know all that there mm -hmm. which were mad but anyway um, <laughs> I've watched I watched them playing live I watched them playing the tower live 99 yes right mm -hmm. and Chemical Wedding I think live wasn't mm -hmm. played too and then I went and watched, I thought, look at him now, right? That's 99, late 99. Mm -hmm. when's, the, when's the first time I see him live, well, in the flesh, Metal 2000? Late 98. Yeah. Okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but then I think Rock and Rio. So mm -hmm. I actually put Rock and Rio on, the first track, and mm -hmm. I watched it. And, and I felt a wee tiny, it's weird, mm -hmm. but I just felt myself. What could have happened if we'd have stayed out? The power of that. What was next? What was next? Yeah. So, we, you know, and I was watching it. I was going, this is amazing. But what would I have this? Mm -hmm. My life, it's always what if. You know, what's next? Like, it would be better. It would be even better if. No, it's a, but, it's a fair question. I was watching, uh, I, 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 I felt a... really bad. I felt like it was betraying Maiden because I was so happy uh -huh. that they were back that together. they were back together. Mm -hmm. And I've never looked back. Yeah. But I've never got into this as much as I have done. And now you've got into it and you're like, I'm like, what? Yeah. An album. What an album. What would their next album have been? That's it. Yeah. That's what I want to know. It wouldn't yeah. have been a concept album, but it and it wouldn't have been Tyranny of Souls. But no, it, it wouldn't would have, have been it wouldn't bloody have been amazing. Of Souls, that's right. Um, but, you know, that's just like Western Your Life Away. So, but I, I watched it and I, one thing and that... But you wouldn't have had Brave New World then? No. You know? And I cannot wait to do that. <laughs> so that, yeah, that's yeah. what you have to tell yourself. Oh, absolutely. You know? I went to bed. I, didn't, yeah. I slept. Don't worry. Mm. I wasn't rolling about the bed. Worry, <laughs> about Iron Maiden in 1989. But why is this album not lauded as a classic and I'm saying it from a person who has an in-depth knowledge of music and I have to mm -hmm. say I do right mm -hmm. all types of music mm -hmm. I like all types of music I love all types of music and I have but this should be regarded as an absolute metal classic I agree with you and from the moment why is it not well Look, look at the chart position. I think it's the number 55 in the UK charts the album or something like that. I don't, I, I don't know, but it, you're, you're, on, you're, or, yeah, but it's a disgrace. Late 90s metal, all that kind of stuff. And like corn, no, you know what it, it was around. Like, you know, I, I know, I hear how I know it was around. Uh -huh. I was back into it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? This is right. I was back into it. Metal and all stuff, you know. Yeah. And Tara, Trent Kill. Um, yeah. But those bands were the exception. You know, you have to remember but this, thing. but this this is a, a, a an older metal guy trying to reinvent himself. Yeah, and but you know you're talking you're into the the day you're back in the days of where airplay ruled. Yeah, you know much. people just couldn't yeah. lift their phone and and yeah go back you, and you know what I mean. Look at so, the entire back catalog. You, you know, uh, yeah, it was just different times, yeah. I suppose. You yeah. know, and people knew, but you know, where did you hear so, about things? Let's get a campaign started. Mm. This album needs to be heard. Yes, and I'd also say, in nineteen ninety eight, from the second I got that this album, I went. This is a classic. Yeah, it's an absolute classic. But 
ironically, you're saying, why isn't it lauded as a classic? But you're only really getting into it now. No, that's <laughs> the point. That's exactly it. So, so why, exactly why didn't it. you get into it? I don't know, sooner? because Maiden came back. But why didn't you get into it before Maiden came back? I don't know. I was drunk. I can't mm. remember. So, <laughs> so there might be the, there's the answer to your question. Huh? And like, I was with you practically every day. I know. I don't know. Uh, I don't really know. I don't really know. Because I was going, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the tire, don't get me wrong. Mm. I don't really know. I just don't know. You were too busy running around singing the like Angel and the God. Yeah, boy, I know. <laughs> so, right. Enough of that. I was going, <laughs> don't know yeah. what, Chris has lost the plot. Yeah. <laughs> probably. You're probably right, man. So, you know what I'm saying? Though, I too, absolutely do, but uh, it needs to be recognised. It should be recognised. To me, this is, is like, this is like taking down a, a mm. poster of um, that tennis girl scratching her arse, right? And you find the Mona Lisa behind it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. No, no, you know, no that's it's a like, good analogy. But you know, yeah. it really is. It's like... Um, I think it's one of the most important records in the Maiden canon. I'm going to go further than that. This is the most underrated album in history. It is. It is. Most in certainly. It, in any musical yep, genre. Yeah. This is the most... This album is... Criminally, not even cr worse than criminally, if you can have underrated. that. Underrated. I mean, I've already indicated how much I love, love this. I know album. you do. I know you do. So, uh, well, we'll do scores. We'll 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 do. <laughs> well, funny feeling, maybe a bit high. We'll do we'll do scores. Yeah, probably. yeah. Um, yeah. Or you've summed up. Oh, uh, yeah. I've the set list from the gig. Set list from their gig. Yep. So cool. go for it. The tour from this um, kicked off with Trumpets of Jericho. Cool. King and Crimson, Chemical Wedding, Jesus. Gates of Your Eyes In, Killing Floor, Book of Thel, Tears of the Dragon, Laughing in the Hiding Bush, Accident of Birth, The Tar, Dark Side of Aquarius, Whoa. Power Slave, Two Minutes to Midnight, The Road to Hell, Flight of Icarus, and strangely, it says Encore 2, Tattooed Millionaire. <laughs> After... What is an almost, well, an absolutely flawless, flawless. set list. <laughs> nah, come on, right. That can't be right, can't tattooed be right. millionaire at the end. Uh, but what a set list. Brilliant. That um, is class. Aside from tattooed millionaire, that is an amazing set list. Yeah. Uh, I would have loved to have seen that tour. Um, but it shouldn't go unremarked that this album was released on the 15th of September, yep. 1998. Yep. So... Maiden. On the 9th of September 1999, I was in Paris, Paris. at the Ed Hunter yep. tour, watching Dickinson rip into Yes yep. High. So it was the 1st so, of February, or four, the very early February 1999, the announcement was made. So th this this album just did it, you know, didn't it? So, yeah, do we want to... Scores. Do scores? scores? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, you go first. I'll go first. No, I'll go first, because I think yours will be higher than mine. Oh, I don't care. I'm going to give this a nine. Okay. I, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. So it is. I love it so much. Um, just that slight wee dip, I feel. But I just think it's brilliant. Brilliant. What are you going to go for? 11. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! At first 11. I'm going to give this 11. <laughs> if I'm allowed. Or, That's 20. Or 10 you if have I'm to not allowed. Is this your first 10? No. Give peace of mind 10. You did give peace of mind 10, sorry. That's your first decent album. That's a good ten. Give give ten. <laughs> this is a better piece of mind. Anyway. I might have given Beast ten, did I? No, or did I, give I didn't give it nine and a half. I think we both give yeah. it nine. No, I give it ten. I can't and, remember. And seventh song might have been that bloody was three close years as well, ago. Just like but, three years ago. Um. Yeah, but for me, this this uh, this is a uh, piece of mind, but. This is this newer is, and better. If you were looking, at, if I if I was looking at this, um. So you're that you're ten and I'm nine. This is 19. my favorite thing from the Iron Maiden. Anything. This is my favorite album of the whole. Lot. Yes. Yes. Of so this is your favorite yes. album of over even better. You like this yes. better than any Iron Maiden album. Yes. Really. Yes. This is my ultimate album. I am amazed, it, it, but not surprised. It is obviously there'll be a few tens. Yeah. That mm -hmm. well. 
yeah. in the Maiden back catalogue that are... The, yeah, I suppose but this, that, 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 that's why I'm not going to give it a 10. This is the one. Because it's, it's not Maiden. <laughs> it's, a maiden po- <laughs> it's a fucking Maiden podcast. But anyway... <laughs> That's the only reason. It deserves a 10. It's a 10. It's brilliant. It's a 10 out of yeah, 10 album. Yeah, it is. Um, for, for me, it's just an un- unbelievable record. Yeah. Combined score of 9.5, which for nine, a nine, very, nine, very nine, long time is oh, the highest score. Average score, score of 9.5. Nine yeah. Combined score. Yeah. F-factor combined score of 9.5. It's extraordinarily it's high score. Very yeah. high. Very high. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not surprised that you, you give it a 10. I'm not surprised you want to give it a 11. It's phenomenal. Yeah, what what yeah. is not to, to to if you can't give out a ten what what can you I mean it's just got everything um, it's the diversity of the music as well uh, as the heaviness and what about experimentation it's concise and I tell just, you one thing yeah. why why I think oh, I'm only going to give it a nine mm-hmm. I do think it's got a Return of the King on it. No, I think it's perfect the way it is. Do you? No, I like Return of the King. I, I think Return of the King is a good tune. It's a B side. It's a good song. It's a good song. But it's yeah. not as good as any of the 10 songs on this album. I think it's better in Troubles and Jackson. But I don't know. I'd swap them to you. I disagree. That's all right. I disagree. Yeah, it's a good song. Yeah, it is a good song. It's a good song. Yeah. But on a album of on 10 superb <laughs> songs. <laughs> Number 11. You know, um, <laughs> that's a bombshell and a half. <laughs> we've, really? been, we've been the Ed Factor. We're not going to bother doing it anymore. We're done. Bollocks. <laughs> It's um. There's going to be a resurgence. It's going to be a resurgence because next up, next up, we're doing our top ten of the nineties. Our top ten of the nineties has to so be done. Our top ten. Ten songs, Andy, not five songs. <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> our t- so because we fucked up the top ten of the eighties. <laughs> so this will be our top ten songs from the 90s era from the 90s era including these so you can't have all 10 <laughs> can I not just <laughs> um, all 10 songs off the chemical wedding <laughs> that's my top 10 songs from the 90s the next episode will be Chris's top 10 songs <laughs> of the 90s because Andy's this is Andy's top 10 of the 90s right here it probably is is it that would be so that, what a coup well it is <laughs> okay that if you were to ask me yes Put your top ten songs down from the nineties. I would pick these ten songs, Chris, oh, because Jesus. they absolutely eat shit <laughs> on any other maiden output. And yet, I'm a f- no like like there's some great other stuff like Sign of the Cross. You know, I love I that, know. and I'm a fan of the X Factor yeah, as an album. Yeah, I know, but it's not the same. But it's not the same as this. Yeah, you know. Uh, X Factor is good, and there's some really good stuff on it. <laughs> this, this is this is phenomenal. No, no, I agree, totally agreed. You know that that that, <laughs> that is right. Okay, so yeah, well, well, the next episode will be top. What we will do what is do you want we, like a combined one. No, no, no. We'll do a top ten Iron Maiden tracks. And this way, shit, I don't know if I can fit ten on. If you want to do it that way, the top ten Iron Maiden tracks of the nineties. All right, okay, and not. The blue stuff. <laughs> because otherwise, I'll just pick just those 10 and, yeah. you know. I'm, you put them in an order. Might, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll do that. So great. we will pick That's our great. top Very 10. Very diplomatic, Andy. Yes, our top Very 10 diplomatic. Iron Maiden tracks of the 1990s, so, yep. since this is an Iron Maiden <laughs> podcast We are all. going to be going to do that, and then... And the, then we'll do Brave New World. We'll do Brave New World. I think it's going to be a bit of a longy that one because we'll have to do a wee bit about the reunion and stuff like that. But yeah, you know, um, I don't think it really warrants a separate episode. No, no, I think this leads leads yeah, into that it's a perfect we've, bookend. We've, we've, we've yeah. teed, teed that up. Mm-hmm. Half, wow. nicely. So, I have, nicely. I have indeed. Um, yeah. So, so thanks very much th- for listening. This guys. has been the most fun, and it is fun every time. <laughs> this has been class today. I really enjoyed it. Uh, well, I always really enjoy it, but this has been particularly good. Yeah, because it, it, it has, because some of the, I suppose, the 90s is a difficult era for Maiden. And, uh, this has just been a lovely surprise. But it's a great way to finish off ah, the yeah, 90s. Yeah, yeah, we're cresting. Because we're we're cresting. That That is it. It, it, uh, it, it, it goes from really difficult to... Yeah. Having to say difficult things about your favorite band, yeah, to actually just being able to go, this is brilliant, yeah, you know, uh, yeah. and uh, and with the beauty of hindsight, knowing where it goes, yeah, 
It's a great thing. So I'm away to sew together some grey, purple and black shredded pants. <laughs> And I'm away <laughs> to cut the arms off a denim jacket. <laughs> so tune in next time. Thanks a million for watching. As yep. always, like, subscribe and comment. We're loving the comments. Loving so the comments. Keep comment. Yes, thank you very much, guys. And, we um, got some great comments from... Yeah, we have from the uh, Blaze episode and, and from and all from you guys. Yeah, and yeah. Andy Smandrick. Thank you for so much for the... Thank for the you. So keep coming. Yep, and we will see you next time when we will talk all about your 90s hits. And, you know... Stick a few in the comments if you want. You might sway Andy yeah. here. No, you won't. Put no, him. no. But I, <laughs> <laughs> we actually, actually, we'd love to hear your thoughts on yeah, this album. We would. Um, Give it a yeah. listen. Give it to your little brother. If you haven't listened to it, you, you're robbing yourself. Of, yeah. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. So tune in. Yep. We'll see you next time. Take it easy, guys. Woohoo!